have you all been? I know David's already done the welcome, but I thought I'll, I'll ask, how is everyone going today? How, how have you been feeling? Can I, good? Thanks, Terry. Any, any hands of, you've been having a good week? Okay week? Yeah, thanks, Nat. Not so good week? Oh, I'll pray for you, Jeff. <laughs> what I thought we'll do is just before we go on, I want to do one thing that I'd like you to do. If you can turn to someone next to you that you may not know, if it's not someone next to you, someone behind you, um, what I'd like you to do is, it may be outside of your comfort zone, it may not be, but what I'd like you to do is open up, if you can, maybe it can be something about you've had something on your heart that's been pressing this week, or it could be something in Thanksgiving. What I'd like you to do is just have a quick chat to the person next to you or behind you and just have a prayer for them. I'll just give you a couple of moments to do so. And if anyone hasn't got a partner, I'm here too. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, man. It's there. All right. Oh, oh, oh.
How are you all going? Done? Thank you for that time. Now that you've done that, oh, I'm going to get you to do something else that might be outside of your norm. And you're thinking, oh, I probably want to run out the door now. What I want you to do is, with that um, particular person that you were praying with, I want you to attempt to try and either give them a hug, give them a hand, or either a handshake, if you're, or if you're not comfortable, and then I want you to say to them, I love you when it's raining, I love you when the sun is shining, as my brother or sister in Christ. Okay, I'll repeat that again. It says, I love you when the sun is shining, I love you, oh, sorry, I love you when it's raining, I love you when the sun is shining, as my brother or sister in Christ. Try it out. <laughs> I love you as my, I love you when it's running. <laughs> as my brother in Christ. That's it. I forgot it too. God bless you, man. God bless you too. God bless you. How'd that feel? Good? You still want to stay or you want to run out the door? <laughs> now, you, you must be thinking, what am I on about with all this touchy-feely stuff? It's time for me to go home. Some of you may be thinking, oh, wow, that makes me feel warm and fuzzy. Now, you may be wondering uh, about my sermon topic today, my brother from another mother, sisters included. Now, what do you think I'm talking about, dear friends, well, on, based on the exercise that we've just performed? Being neighbourly to each other, whether it's, whether it's within our church or outside of our church. I'm talking about being there for our dear fellow man or woman, just as Christ would expect us to be. Whether it's in our church family, your immediate family, whether it's your next door neighbour, or whether it's the guy that you say hello to at the petrol station. Why I'm bringing this up, dear friends, is that there's an issue within our church communities. And I'm just not talking about any church in particular, but I'm talking about that where it seems that there's a personal factor, there's also something missing. What am I talking about? We all know the story of the Good Samaritan in Luke 10, verses 25 to 37. If you've got your Bibles, could you please turn with me as I read it? On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked. What must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, Love the law, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbour as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbour? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man in his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was the neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Now here, Jesus goes on to explain, well, he gives an answer to the given question by a scholar in the crowd, what must I do to inherit eternal life? We know that the summary of the story is with Jesus' answer in reference in Deuteronomy 6, with love the law your God with all your 
heart, soul, and mind and strength. And it ends with a reference to Leviticus 19 with quoting, love your neighbour as yourself. Now, so what is the first step in being a good neighbour, my friends? Number one, ensuring that we ourselves invite Christ into our lives, not just as a necessity, but as our saviour. Thanks to the blessing of his son Jesus, we have been given the assurance of his love by his son. Looking at the teachings of Jesus' love, what does he say in Leviticus 19 verse 18? He says, Greater love has no man than to lay down his life for a friend. Now looking at this in context, we need to remember that following Jesus requires the loving attitude and actions which are impossible without him as our personal saviour. Now obviously, if we are not ready at this stage, he's willing and he's patient with us, and then he's ready to accept us when we're ready to accept him. It can just be like if you've had a thorn stuck in your foot. Oh, I don't know if you've ever had like one of those tiny ones, those annoying ones, and it's stuck right underneath, and then you go for a walk, and then you feel that pring every time you walk, and then you, you sit down, and then you're looking for it, and then you eventually you get it out and go, ah, oh, what a relief. It's like similar to making the commitment there's no pain involved with coming on board with Christ. We are so fortunate that we can come to him at any stage of our lives once we are ready to make the commitment. At this stage, you may be asking, who is my neighbourly brother or sister? How do I become a good neighbour? When we look into the word, our answer is found together with the life-changing message of Jesus, with the unconditional service of his followers. Before the Good Samaritan could help out the suffering man in the ditch, he had to see him. Now when I say, why am I exaggerating, see him, when Jesus says in John 4.35, he says, open your eyes and see the fields. This analogy that he's talking about, dear friends, is about people, all kinds of people. When was the last time we looked and saw someone as God's creation in need of a personal relationship with him. As we meet and greet those that we either meet here in church or in our day to day, we've got three types of opportunities. I'll go through them. Number one, renew those old friendships. As big or smaller community, we, we may meet people that we haven't seen in a long time. They may have been friends in high school or someone you may have been growing up with. Um, it could have been someone that you've been growing up with and they've been going to church with you as well. And then you wonder along the track, where along the line did we get separated? And you think back and think now, you say, if you have this circumstance, I ask you to take that time to renew that friendship because you never know what can come out of it. Yeah? Opportunity number two, reach out to strangers our fellow brothers and sisters who we may not know. For some of us, this may be a strange proposition to ask. But when newcomers come into a community environment, what are they looking for? They're looking for a friend. They're looking for us to be friendly. You introduce yourselves just as you would at any other place. Given this day and age with the possibility of social disconnection due to technology or the fear of thinking what the other people might be like. Strangers, as you might expect it, are not necessarily bad people, just people that we haven't had the opportunity to meet. In the spirit of Christ, my friends, let's open our eyes. I'm not asking you to jump in excitement and say, give me a hug, man. That'll be something like what I'd do, probably. <laughs> so excuse me if I ever do that to you. Don't get alarmed. <laughs> but in saying this, in my experience, I wasn't always like this, how I am today, right? I was, for anyone that knows you, uh, knows me, uh, probably Marg is probably the only one who knows me from school days, I was quite a timid and shy fellow. And I think it wasn't until my life experiences later on and exposure to the world which helped me to see the inner beauty and nature in others 
And, and that helped me to build up my confidence by the grace of God within me. Opportunity number three, the chance to repair past relationships. This can be the most hardest. Yet if we approach it in the way that Christ desires, this area could change our lives. You may have heard me in my testimony that it took me a good 15 years to amend my relationship with my father uh, back in Melbourne um, because of our broken family that we grew up with. Our Lord is all about relationships. Think about the one another's in Scripture and think about applying it to your life. He wants us to be about one another. Many of us, if not most of us, know of somebody with whom we've had an altercation with at some point. And instead of working through the problem, we've walked away, we've ignored it, and it sits like a wound in our hearts. My prayer, dear friends, is that the Spirit of God floods our church family, that we as a people of peace, not peace at any cost, but rather Christ followers, us, a people who strives for peace in the context of our Father's divine will. What's next after we have these chances of opportunity to bond with either an old friend, a stranger, or someone from the past? Open our hearts to them. Yeah? And how do we open our hearts? The Good Samaritan, he saw the man lying in the ditch and urgent, in their urgent need of help, and he took it to another level. Unlike the other two men who passed him by, he felt deeply sorry for the man, as biblical translation puts it. In these times today, we need to open our hearts and care for people. Now, they may not necessarily be people that have been left for dead, but left for dead in their particular circumstance. You may speak kind words to someone who's had a bad run or has been in a particular situation where they've been either a fellow believer, a fallen believer, or possibly a future believer. Serving others. What do we say when we talk about that word, those words, serving others? When the good Samaritan opened his eyes to the situation, he opened his heart and his hands. He got in the ditch and he took analysis of the situation. Based on this, what do we recommend? Take a personal interest in others. If you meet a visitor in church or in the neighbourhood where you live, show some honest interest. Find out about them. You'd be surprised how many people out there in this society don't ever get a phone call or a hello. And it's unfortunate to say that in this day and age, we live in a culture of loneliness. Number two, make a planned investment. Now, when you hear that word investment, you're, you're probably the first thing that comes to mind is money. Now, no, I'm not talking about money, my dear friends. My suggestion is the greatest, ever greatest, most awesome thing that you can invest is yourself and your time. Now, I know that most of us are busy in our hustle and bustle with our lives, but your investment in God's love and work will be well invested. I'm not saying that you've got to burn yourselves out and bend over backwards in, F in order to be hospitable. I'm saying it could be a simple bond of having a cup of coffee with a friend and just being a listening ear. Or it could be helping a maid out with some furniture. You know. Now, Charlestown, don't think that I'm specifically talking about you, as I can give you plenty of examples which our personal family has experienced here as a blessing into the church family of Charlestown. From that first time that we arrived here in Newcastle, we were greeted and invited by our pastor, our pastor home for lunch, which we thought was really nice. And then what had followed was a series of warm invitations to you guys opening up your homes to us. And if you don't mind me mentioning names, I, had, um, I know Kendall's not here, but Kendall, Henry and Joseph, you guys have your, your little men's group that you, you meet every so often and making me feel welcome with a warm meal. Amazing. Thank you. Nerida and Bev, three years ago when we first came, you guys were so determined to start up the Kids Sabbath School with your warm welcome and spiritual nurturing towards the kids. When there was only a few kids, look at it, by the grace of God, it's paid off and it's just a, a blessing. Nat, 
Michael, Lance, Robin, Owen, Alicia, and many others of the church family here, when we needed a helping hand, you were there to help us out. Can't thank you guys enough. Jeffrey, our dear friend, always there with a good day and the warmest hug that will make you feel alive for the day. Good on you, mate. Bev and the prayer group with Craig there as well, Craig and Marion. Being a part of that prayer group was a blessing and it will continue to be a blessing with what you have in your vision with the connect and interest groups. And not forgetting the worship team. Your passion with your dedication for, for our hearts and ears is more than a pleasant welcome each week. My thoughts leave with you, dear friends, just as Christ asked us to love one another as he loved us. He spoke words of hope to the helpless, compassion to the crushed, help to the helpless and healing to the hurt. Whether it's welcoming in our church, attending to the general needs of our brother or sister locally, or if your dream is perhaps to maybe take it overseas in mission, let's be a brother from another mother to our fellow brothers and sisters, my dear friends, just as Christ wants us to be. God bless you. Have a great Sabbath.